much cheddar does a nation need? A lot, apparently. Whether you're thinking about moving to the UK or already planning to do so, today I'm gonna give you 10 things that I wish I had known before moving here. Hopefully I will be able to offer you some advice along the way as well because I'm just that nice. Just to give you guys a little bit of background info on me, I moved here about two years ago from the Czech Republic, that is Central Europe, not Eastern. Thank you very much. And I moved here for university because I thought that leaving my home country would mean leaving my problems behind. It most definitely did not. But anyway, let's start with number one. Living in the UK is quite expensive. It is actually one of the top 10 most expensive countries in Europe to live in and it ranks right behind Switzerland, Scandinavia and all of those other fairy tale lands. The average rent price here is £641 and for that lovely price you can get a nice moldy apartment with taps that look like this. What in case you were wondering, this is how the engineers designing this imagined people washing their hands. Of course, as is true in any other country, the cost of living greatly depends on the location and in the UK, as a general rule, the further south you go, the more expensive things are gonna get. But London is of course the most expensive one. As long as you have a job, it's all fun and games. But if you don't... Which is why I would like to give a big shout out to my grandma who supports my entire human existence abroad. If you'd like to get your own grandma at 20% off, check out the link in my description box. Number 2. Transport First of all, just like everything else in England, public transport is expensive. Here in Brighton you will pay £4.70 for a daily bus ticket, but what's even more expensive than bus tickets are train tickets. The prices are somewhat acceptable for short distances, but for longer distances you will probably pay a lot of money especially if you're buying your ticket very close to the departure date. For that reason, try to buy your train ticket as soon as you know you'll be traveling. Trust me. Second of all, the public transport is really unreliable. The buses are always late and they stop every 100 meters, so it takes forever to get anywhere. Similarly with trains, except that there are always engineering works happening on the trains, so you might have to get a replacement bus a couple of times a year. My absolute favorite is when public transport gets cancelled altogether because of a big event. It's basically the British public transport system telling you, go fuck yourself. Number 3. The best thing about this country is that most people are not from this country. If you're an international like me, you don't have to worry about not being able to fit in at all because there are literally a million other people in the same position as you. And not to sound cheesy as fuck, but talking to people from other cultures really does expand your horizons. And if you're looking to practice your third language, you are most definitely gonna find someone you can do that with. Related to that, there are a variety of authentic restaurants and food shops, which almost makes up for the awful British cuisine. I'm sorry, but fried with the side of fried is not a meal. It's the fastest way to die from high cholesterol. One word of advice, if you're looking to eat at an Italian restaurant, make sure that it's actually authentic. If I were you, I would avoid Italian restaurant chains such as Ask Italian or Bella Italia, unless you want to eat some of the worst bland tasting overcooked pasta you've ever had in your entire life. Another little word of advice, if you want to eat out, make sure you check the place's hygiene rating. You can usually find it on the outside or you can also check it on the internet. And I wouldn't recommend eating anywhere that has a hygiene rating of 3 or below that. I worked at a place that allegedly had a hygiene rating of 3 and trust me, you don't want to eat there. <laughs> But if you're a student, you don't have to worry about any of this because you will most likely be too poor to eat out anyway. Number 4 It is commonly known that British people are usually very polite. Spoiler alert, most of the time they're probably chatting shit behind your back. But either way, most of the time people being polite actually makes you feel nice and welcome. When I first moved here, it made me really uncomfortable how personal everybody was being. I just met you a second ago. I am not your mate, okay? One thing that I think is important to mention is that British people really like being politically correct. Now, 
I come from a country that is not like that at all. So you can imagine the reactions I was getting when I first moved here. It was not fun. After you get to know two people a little bit better, you will realize that most of them don't really care about being PC anyway. They just feel like they should be acting PC because other people are acting PC. Social pressure, am I right? Another thing about British people, binge drinking is a very popular hobby around here, usually accompanied by use of heavy trucks. Let me demonstrate that with the following reenactment that is based on a true story. What are you having tonight? Oh, I was thinking about maybe having a gin and tonic or, you know, some classic. No, mate, I meant what drugs are you taking? If you're a person that enjoys nightlife and everything associated with it, you are gonna have a good time. There are so many people doing the same thing as you, so many venues that you can go to. There's literally a night out hosted every single day of the week. On the other hand, if you're not that kind of person, you're gonna have to deal with drunk and obnoxiously loud people in the streets and on public transport pretty much every day of the week. Yeah, I'm so done with students. Number five. This one is for those of you that are coming to the UK to study just like I did. Having studied in both the Czech Republic and the UK, I can confidently say that studying in the UK is so much easier. It is not even necessarily because the content itself is easier or there's less of it. It's mostly because the courses here are much better organized. You are likely to get access to an internal platform like this one, where you will have all of your readings and all of your PowerPoint slides in the same place. Place. And if you're lucky, your university might even record the lectures for you, so you don't have to worry about missing one ever again. If you'd like to find out more about studying in the UK, I am planning to make a whole another dedicated video on this topic, so make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. Number six. If you're moving to the UK, you can say goodbye to sunshine and warmth. It is no surprise, but it rains here. A lot. And it's all fun and games when you're indoors wrapped in your favorite blankie. But once you step outside, it is you versus the elements. You can forget about buying an umbrella. The wind here is so strong that not only does it invert your umbrella inside out, it actually makes the rain fall sideways as well, leaving you with pretty much zero chance of staying dry. So how do you protect from the rain? The best way to do that is A buy a raincoat or a waterproof jacket. B, get a good pair of waterproof shoes. And C, accept the fact that you will get wet. No matter how hard you try not to, to some degree, you will get wet. But since the weather here is so terrible all the time, when it actually does get sunny, the people here make the most of it. You are guaranteed to see someone walking outside in 11 degrees wearing just a t-shirt and flip-flops. And if you're lucky, you might even see someone doing their ironing in the backyard. Again, based on a true story. Because of the latitude here, I hope it's latitude. If it's longitude, please correct me, I have no idea. The summer days are really nice because the sun usually sets no sooner than 9 p.m. But on the other hand, the winter days are really, really short and the sun usually sets by 4 p.m. And if you live on the coast like me, there's the sea! It's almost always cold as fuck, so you can't actually swim in it, but at least you can splash your feet in there, which is something. Number seven. Food. I already kind of touched on this earlier, but there are so many amazing authentic places where you can get food from. We've got Chinese, Indian, Korean, Indian, Turkish. Oh, and did I mention Indian? There's a lot of Indian. And since generally speaking, English people don't really like to cook all that much, the takeout options are amazing. There are so many companies providing it, so you can literally order your meal and have it within 20 minutes at your doorstep. I wouldn't recommend doing this too often though, because it will make your wallet cry. And second of all, because people here really don't cook as much, there are so many ready meal options at the supermarket. 
maybe too many if you ask me. Another thing about the supermarkets here is that the shelves are rarely fully stocked, especially if you come later in the day. I don't know if it's because they're not restocked throughout the day or people just come and go so often that everything is immediately sold out. But either way, if you want to make sure you get everything on your shopping list, I would recommend getting up a little bit earlier so that you can finally get that broccoli that you've been craving for two whole weeks. If you're a zero waste friendly person, you are not gonna like what you find in the supermarkets here. Literally almost everything is wrapped in plastic. Not only is it extremely bad for the environment, it has happened to me numerous times that I bought vegetables and they went off before I was able to eat them because they were just so many. I mean, look at all these carrots. I just want one fucking carrot. But ending on a positive note, the UK is very vegetarian slash vegan friendly. Not only does that mean that you can find a variety of meat substitutes here, but if God hates you as much as he hates me and made you lactose intolerant, you can still enjoy a nice cup of coffee because there are so many plant-based milks on offer. It is amazing. Number eight. As capitalism is the official religion of the UK, the people here are, let's say, very materialistically oriented. But there are both positives and negatives associated with this. On the one hand, you feel like people are constantly trying to take your money, even though you barely have any. <laughs> the UK has this weird thing about discount cards. You can buy a card to get a discount. One example of this is a rail card. If you buy one for 30 quid, you get a 30% discount on your tickets. But if you only travel like once a year, that's not gonna do you any good anyway. But on the other hand, there are loads of shopping options. Whether that's for clothes, jewelry, pretty much anything you want, you can get here. And I mustn't forget about my most favorite thing about the UK, which is Amazon Prime. Where not only can you get pretty much anything for pretty low prices, but unlike in the US, here you can get your product literally the next day, which is amazing. One thing that personally really annoys me about this whole consumerist culture is how wasteful people are because of it. Just to give you an example, last year I had a flatmate who bought brand new Nike shoes and when she was supposed to move out, she just threw them out because she didn't like them anymore and forgot to return them. For as cheap as motherfuckers, this has a silver lining in the form of charity shops. In charity shops, you can get good quality products, usually at a fraction of the price, whether that's clothes or books or sometimes even furniture. So if you've got the time and a thrifty soul, I would definitely recommend checking one of these bad boys out. Number nine. The one thing that British people love even more than the royal family is the National Health Service or NHS. Thanks to the NHS, healthcare is available to literally everybody and you don't have to worry about having to pay millions after you literally almost died. I'm looking at you, America. One thing that I personally really like about the NHS is their emphasis on sexual health, probably because of the ever-rising teen pregnancy and STD rates. But anyway, testing for STDs here is free and you can even do it in the comfort of your home if you don't want anybody to look at your cooch. Plus, contraception is also free. But even if you are using birth control, make sure your partner still puts a raincoat on his boy. And while the NHS is free and amazing and all that, they are constantly suffering from a lack of staff. This means that when you want to book an appointment, you might have to wait longer for that. And when you finally do get one, the nurses might not even let you see the doctor. They only let you see the doctor if they think it is necessary. And if you have mental health issues, you're gonna have to wait a couple of months before you can see a therapist. But it's free, so, you know. Number 10. It is in Europe, but not really European. There are a few little quirks that really distinguish the UK from the rest of Europe. Number one, the cars here drive on the other side of the road. I have lived here for two years and for that reason I am still terrified of crossing the street. And because the cars drive on the left, the people here walk on the left as well, creating many awkward situations such as this one. 
Number two, these funny little plug sockets with the switch on button. If you're ever wondering why your appliance is not working, just check the plug socket. It is probably because it is not turned on. Number three, the fact that British people don't really use the metric system. Mm, yeah, I'm six feet tall. I'll have a pint of beer, please. That's just 25 miles from here. That's five tea bags per ring, cloud mate. Number four, it is really hard to get a cup of coffee here after 7 p.m. Equally, it is hard to get pretty much anything after 5 p.m. on Sundays because everything, and I mean everything, is closed. Who thought that was a good idea? And number five, most of the products that you would usually get in any other European country are really hard to come by here. So before you move here, you make sure to stock up on your favorite chocolate. I had to learn the hard way. If you found this video useful, found out about something that surprised you, found out about something that didn't surprise you, let me know in the comments down below. I am planning to make a whole series on the topic of studying, living and working in the UK, so if you don't want to miss out on all that beautiful information featuring me, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And I will see you here next time.